The Gators are getting ready to play the Tennessee Volunteers in just about 48 hours from now. And Gator fans, you're not the only ones excited for this game. There are dozens of top recruits that are fired up for this one and going to be on the sidelines. Today, we're going to break down who are the most important visitors that will be in the swamp this weekend. But first, Gator fans, hit that subscribe button. We are now on the On3 Recruits page. You know, we were doing our thing on the big On3 channel, but now... We got a page dedicated only to recruiting. So go ahead and subscribe. All right, Keith Niebuhr from Gators Online, my guy. We're here to talk about some of the most important visitors this weekend. And they are four-star defensive lineman LJ McCray, four-star DB Zay Mincy, four-star athlete Cam McKell, and then the 2025 prospect, five-star safety DJ Pickett. All right, Keith, let's start at the top with LJ McCray. He's taken trips to both Miami and FSU already this season. Now he'll be in the swamp. What's your read on where things stand with LJ McCray and the Florida Gators? Well, you know, he's got that top five, Auburn, Florida, Florida State, Miami, and Georgia. And I think four of the schools think they have a realistic chance, to be honest with you. I don't, I don't think Auburn's feeling that vibe right now. But, you know, obviously Florida feels like they're in it. Florida State says, hey, look, he was just at the Florida State LSU game in Orlando. He's going to take an official visit to Tallahassee the weekend of October 7th. And then he's going to announce maybe a few weeks after that, his, his birthday is October 18th. And he's saying, hey, decision sometime around then or after. And then you've got Miami, which, uh, you know, feels like they've got some momentum based off, uh, you know, the last week's win and, and all that. So uh, and then obviously there's Georgia. And yeah. Georgia was the last school he visited in July. So, again, there's optimism, I think, at all four. But, Josh, I think if you're a Florida fan or a Florida coach, uh, one of the things that has to make you feel at least like you're you're very much within um, – you have a realistic shot of landing L.J. McRae is a couple things here. One, your relationships. He's probably been to Florida as much as he's been to anywhere else. And he's very close. He's built a good relationship with a lot of the other recruits, okay, the, a lot of the other commitments to Florida. And two – uh, you know, this is a guy that, quite frankly, you know, proximity to home is big for him. And yeah. so, uh, so you know, but the, the other thing you have to consider here is that Florida is kind of the common denominator. When you, when you hear FSU mentioned, Florida comes up. When you hear Georgia mentioned, Florida comes up. Miami, Florida. So Florida is kind of the one school that I think everybody realizes they have to contend with. I would say the optimism is, is fairly high in Gainesville. But it's also high, maybe highest, maybe in Athens. All right. And he's at Mainland High School over there in Daytona Beach. And his teammate, DB Zay Mincy, one of the top uncommitted DBs in the state of Florida, he'll also be with him. Now, these two recruitments aren't really tied together. But Zay Mincy and LJ McRae both have a lot of interest in the Gators. Who do you view is uh Zay Mincy, who's the biggest competition for UF when it comes to Mincy? Yeah, you know, you know, I think people, Josh, think we're wishy-washy sometimes where we mention a bunch of schools. We don't know where a guy's leaning at, at a certain time. Well, when you get this late in the cycle, there's a reason why a lot of these guys haven't committed, right? I mean, they've got all yeah. the big boys after them. So we know FSU likes them a lot. Uh, we know Alabama is heavily involved. But it feels yeah. like it's really a Florida-Miami battle at this time. Mm -hmm. Now, again, we say that. Uh, but if Alabama, you know, turns up the heat, you know, you, you can't count them out. They've already beaten Florida for one cornerback in this cycle out of the state of Florida, and that's Jameer Grimsley yeah. at Tampa Catholic, who, by the way, Florida's still recruiting. So there's all these dynamics in play. But we think right now that Miami's got some momentum with Zay Mincy. You know, obviously, um, the, the big win last week, he had an outstanding visit to Miami, we believe, the last weekend in July. Uh, but all along, Florida has been considered probably the team to beat. Uh, and if you talk to people, uh, you know, that are plugged into recruiting situations across the South, they still think that Florida probably is the favorite. But mm -hmm. obviously, you got to keep an eye on Miami. There's no question about that. Um, and so we'll see. But, you know, again, he's going to be in Gainesville this weekend. Uh, another big visit for Florida. You know, you've got Corey Raymond, you know, arguably one of the best defensive back coaches in the country, working hard on this recruitment. And, uh, you know, Florida's got a strong DB class, but they would love to add Zay Mincy, who, by the way, is listed as a corner, uh, excuse me, as a safety by a lot of the recruiting services. But Florida does, in fact, want him at corner. So uh, but you're right. You're right, Josh. These two recruitments, Zay Mincy and LJ McRae, are kind of doing their own things. You know what I mean? They're, they're two, uh, two recruitments that aren't really tied to each other, even though they're teammates and good friends. Now, yeah. The thing about Zay Mincy, he's not going to announce his decision until, I believe, the All-American Bowl in, in uh, January. 
But he has said uh, as recently as just a, uh, three weeks ago to me that he's probably going to have a decision right about this time frame, right about now. And he will let one of the schools know, hey, I'm coming. And, uh, but he won't go public with it until January. Inside Scoop fans, listen up. Tailgate season is here, and I got to tell you about the bird dog shorts that I've been wearing. You know they were the big winner for me this summer, and I'm rolling with them right into the fall. I wear them to work. I wear them to golf. I brought them on vacation with me to Florida, so of course I'm wearing them to the tailgate. Last weekend when the boys invited me out, I didn't pull up to Lot B in my old stiff khakis. Nope. You know I wore my bird dogs instead, and I'm glad I did. Yeah, I got a lot of compliments on them, but more importantly, it's still hot out. Just because football is here does not mean that fall is too. It's swampy out there, but not in my bird dogs. Bird dogs has a great cloud knit fabric that looks just like a nice pair of khakis, but way more flexible, way more comfortable, and most importantly, it keeps you cool and dry, even for a noon kickoff. So here's what we're going to do. I need you guys to go to birddogs.com forward slash Josh or enter promo code Josh for a free bird dog tech hat with your order. I got one right here. I wear it golfing. It's great. It's light. It fits. You need it. Go get it. Birddogs.com forward slash Josh or promo code Josh for a free bird dog tech hat. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Yeah, we love a good silent commitment here on the inside scoop. All right, the next prospect we're going to talk about is four-star athlete Cam McHale out of the state of Georgia. He's an interesting one. He's a two-sport athlete. Now, Georgia likes him more as a DB. The other team that's heavily in his recruitment is Tennessee. They're open to him playing some offense. And then last week, he kind of, you know, took a left turn and went out to Colorado for an official visit. So this weekend, he'll be in the swamp. Where do the Gators see him playing, fitting in on that roster? And is he a priority right now to that staff? Well, I've been told that this was uh, you know, a few weeks ago, this was going to be a recruitment that had some, that there was a little bit of a roller coaster ride. And sure enough, it it is. Is the out of left field visit from Colorado. Now, I think all along people have thought, this is a guy that's going to end up at Georgia. But Georgia mm. likes him at defensive back, okay? Now, he's a special athlete from Statesboro, Georgia, just you know, west of Savannah, actually the home of Georgia Southern University. Very talented athlete, could play either side. But he wants to play offense, and that really threw a big wrinkle in this recruitment. So whereas I think at one time people thought, shoo into Georgia, they now don't think that. Now, could he still right. end up there? Sure, but at last check, and talking with Rusty Mansell of, of Dogs HQ of the On3 Network, you know, Georgia still liked him at defensive back. But Florida has told him uh, they came around to the idea of him playing receiver, and they're recruiting him at receiver. Now, the Gators have three receivers committed. They'd like to add one more. They would love it to be Jeremiah Smith. <laughs> I'm sure everybody would, the five-star high right. state commit that they're still working on. He will not be in Gainesville this week, and I'm not sure what that means, but he's not going to be there. So you can read into that it, it, what you will. Um, and so Cam McHale is a guy that's emerged – he wants to officially visit Florida, but here's another catch, another little interesting wrinkle to his recruitment, Josh. Florida does not want to do in-season official visits. Now, they had one planned, and that was Jordan Seaton, the four-star offensive tackle. That got, that got canceled. I don't know who canceled it, but he was going to officially visit this weekend, and that, that's no longer happening. So they would prefer to do official visits after the season, but Cam McHale has wanted to do officials during the season. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Uh I think this is a guy that they continue to evaluate. They, I think they want to meet him. They want to see how this weekend goes, how much they click with him, how much he clicks with them. And then we should know more in the future. But, yeah, absolutely yeah. Florida's recruiting him at receiver, and uh, that's what he wants to play. All right. Now, the last prospect on this list is 2025, but it's not too early to talk about him. DJ Pickett, the number one safety in the class, resides in Zephyr Hills, Florida, which is just south of Gainesville. Last weekend, he was at Miami, had some great things to say about the Canes win over Texas A&M. This weekend, he'll be in the swamp. How significant of a visit is this to get DJ Pickett on campus early? Well, he's been there uh, many times. And, you know, he was there uh, in a seven-on-seven -seven camp over the summer, which, by the way, he was the best player there that day. And there were some special talents. And so, you know, he he's a tall safety. But, Josh, he can also play receiver. And so Florida yeah. started telling him earlier this year, hey, look, the Gators are recruiting you for both sides of the ball. And, you know, with, with uh, 
the kid out of Colorado doing that, a lot of young guys want to hear that, right? And he's that kind of a talent. He just makes it look easy. He's really skinny, wiry, but uh, lo- great length. I mean, I'm not an evaluator, but he's, he's got what you're looking for, right? And he's got mm-hmm. that get factor, too. He just makes plays on both sides of the ball, Josh. Mm-hmm. And then also, we mentioned this guy's name earlier, Corey Raymond, the secondary coach at Florida. I mean, every defensive back that you interview, when you talk to them about Florida, he's the guy that they bring up. He's he's really the big pull to Florida. I mean, you know, so that's uh, significant too. So with those two things in play, Florida's absolutely going to have a shot in his recruitment. I don't know that they would be the favorite, uh, but they're certainly in it. They're just going to have to keep getting them back on campus. And he's even said, look, they're young up in Gainesville. Mm -hmm. uh, He's not expecting 11 and one either. You know, they, I think, like I said, I think it was significant, Josh, that the Florida staff has been honest with these guys and told them that the rebuild is is ongoing. All right, Keith. Well, there will be some big uncommitted targets, and there will also be a lot of commitments there as well. And one of the best recruit recruiters in the country is going to be on the sidelines in DJ Lagway. How important is it to have DJ Lagway at almost every big recruit uh, recruiting moment of the cycle for the Gators? Oh, it's huge. I mean, the guy, he, look, you know, we had he, Jeremiah Smith, the five star receiver, is committed to Ohio State. We talked mm-hmm. about him a little earlier. He even said earlier this year that, that DJ Lagway was the, be, was the best recruiter at Florida. He was oh, the oh, best. Yeah, yeah, you know, so the kid is just really likable. He's engaging, he's friendly. And here's what he doesn't do, Josh he doesn't shove Florida on these guys. He talks about Florida, he gets to know them. Uh, they like being around him. He's sort of that alpha male, but he's not the mm-hmm. alpha male that barges in a room and is real loud. He's an alpha male that walks in the room and just commands attention because he's six three and a half, you know, two hundred forty pounds, <laughs> wide shoulders, engaging smile, uh, incredible personality. I mean, he's he's a, the true representative, uh, what you truly want in a representative of your class, and other kids gravitate toward him. So he's been significant in Florida putting together this class, which is currently number three in the country, and he'll be significant moving forward. If you're Florida, you're going to want him around LJ McCray because DJ Lagway, not only is he a likable, talented football player, he's also highly intelligent. Well, that's that's LJ McCray, who we mentioned mm-hmm. earlier. He's a highly intelligent kid. He understand he, he understands this whole recruiting thing well, believe me. And uh, so you want those two guys together, and you hope that they they click. But one thing DJ Lagway is not going to do is pressure a guy into committing to Florida. And by not doing that, it makes a lot of them want to go to Florida. Absolutely, and they'll be a big help because hey, the staff is out on the field coaching, so somebody needs to be up in the stands recruiting, and that's why they got all these commitments on hand. All right, Keith Niebuhr. They got a staff of about 900 people too, but <laughs> that is true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, DJ will be doing his part. No question about it. He was, Josh, he was there last week for the McNeese game. I know every big moment he's there. I mean, it, it makes you think, you know, if you're a Gator fan and you're concerned, okay, what if my team wins five games this year? What's going to happen with DJ Lagway? Mm-hmm. Look, we, we can't predict the future, right? None of us can you, me, nobody, but the fact he's there for McNeese game is probably a pretty promising sign. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't think there's much concern over DJ Lagway, regardless of uh, record, because DJ Lagway is going to come in and impose his will on that roster and improve things once he steps on campus. Keith Niebuhr, Gators Online, thanks for previewing this big weekend as the Gators take on Tennessee. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that content, be sure to subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel. We have a new page dedicated only to recruiting. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now.